After a dark year, I'm happy to be back at the Saratoga Performing Arts Center, where I spoke with Elizabeth Sobel about what audiences can expect this summer. Thinking back to last March, I think I knew in my heart of hearts on the day we shut down that that was to that we were going to need to brace ourselves and, and prepare for a cancellation. But I didn't say that to my colleagues because obviously there was a tremendous um, psychological piece to all of this. The notion of SPAC canceling a whole season after more than 50 years was just inconceivable, you know? The fact that this amphitheater stage would be dark was just an unthinkable notion, right? And yet we had to start thinking the unthinkable. Finally, on May 18, we did announce the unannounceable and had to announce that we were canceling the whole season. And that was just a, a, a brutal moment. But we knew that one way or another, we could not go through another season without our resident companies here. They're our lifeblood, our DNA. Um, and so as early as July of last year, we started talking to the resident companies and saying to the community, one way or the other, these artists are gonna be back. People have to remember that Normally, it takes us 12 to 24 months to plan a particular season. The repertoire they're bringing, the sets, the productions, all of that stuff has to be taken into account. Now, of course, it's made even more complex and challenging by the fact that we haven't had 24 months nor 12 months, but really a couple of months, um, because you can't start selling tickets until you know how many tickets you can sell and whether they have to be six feet apart from each other or three feet apart. Let's talk about City Ballet for a moment because that's the, probably the most complicated situation we have. First of all, all of these organizations um, are governed by underlying collective bargaining agreements. And so in the case of the New York City Ballet, they have a clause in their contract that requires City Ballet, the organization, to inform the dancers by roughly middle of April what they're going to be doing that summer, right? So cast your mind back to April vaccinations were still infinitesimal level at that point right and so there were also these questions about the um how how can you socially distance a pas de deux for instance you know how do you put hundreds of people who are normally backstage together how do you socially distance like dancers and musicians who are running around how do you put you know the normal you know 60 70 musicians in an orchestra pit that's normally packed like a sardine can you can't do that. So we made a joint decision. We're calling on and off the stage, New York City Ballet on and off the stage. And basically, in lieu of a troop of 200 plus, we've got 25 people coming up, and it's going to be 75 minute performances. The dancers in costume, they will not be doing complete ballets, but excerpts. And there will be interspersed with talking from, from some of the ballet dancers, really talking about like, like why this ballet? How did it happen? What you know? What was the ins uh, the inspiration behind it? The music, the costumes, and I think it's going to give Saratoga audiences a glimpse behind the curtain that they frankly never had with New York City Ballet. And I I find this like stripping it down to its essence enormously exciting. And then in August, uh, the 11th to the 14th, we do have the Philadelphia Orchestra coming back. Yannick Nezes again, the amazing, amazing music director of Philadelphia is coming back for glorious, diverse, rich programs. Closing night with Joshua Bell doing the Beethoven Violin Concerto. The what can I expect question is the hardest one because it's very likely that, you know, two weeks from now, the answer will be different. But in general, um, we will be maintaining social distancing in the seating pods that people are buying or have bought or will buy. Um, because we think that, you know, until COVID is completely eradicated, you know, this summer it's important to be more cautious than less cautious. Um, and so there will be social distancing. Most likely all summer long, we will be requiring proof of vac vaccination or of a negative test. Um, in order to just know that we don't have, to the best of our knowledge, any live COVID cases coming onto the grounds. So one really amazing and exciting thing that awaits audiences coming to the SPAC campus this summer, particularly those who did not come at all last summer, 
is the Pines at SPAC, our brand new facility, brand new concessions, brand new bathrooms, many, many more bathrooms than, than uh, in previous uh, seasons, a covered pavilion right in the middle of the campus where we do lots of amazing, wonderful new pre-show events and culinary events. And then the incredible Pines at SPAC facility itself, which has our first ever year-round indoor education room and a beautiful 2,000 square foot terrace called the Pines Terrace. You'll, you'll just be blown away. And we're so happy to have that awaiting people after this long, long, difficult year. You know, when you constantly thinking about how to fill a 5,200 seat amphitheater, your mind goes in a particular direction with particular types of artists and particular types of presentations. But when all of a sudden that's closed, but you have this enormous blank canvas to paint on, it gives you so much, so much incredible opportunity to do things you never did before and to do them in intimate ways. And that's really exciting. And what we found um, last summer was that these 50 person gatherings around food, around art, around healing arts, around any number of things, the sense of gratitude that people had to be back on the spec grounds, to be together and to feel safe. Those were some of the, my most memorable moments in the last four, four and a half years.